All right, I think we can prepare, Kevin. There is um, um, a huge amount of people online. Um, welcome, everybody, to another um, event of the Sydney Neonatal Lectures um, series that's been going on for, for quite some time. And um, we, we continue on um, trying to give these kind of um, educational opportunities throughout. Um, today we have a really wonderful set of speakers, um, but I'm going to hand over to Karen Walker, who's going to chair this session. Um, for all of us, just beware to mute yourself and put your video off if it's not necessary. But at the end, you can certainly um, uh, unmask yourself if there's time for discussions and place your questions into the chat box. Karen, over to you. Thank you very much. Welcome, colleagues from all around the world. My name is Karen Walker. I'm a clinical professor at the University of Sydney and a clinical nurse consultant in the neonatal unit in Royal Prince Alfred in Sydney. I'm also the president of the Council of International Neonatal Nurses, and I'm delighted to chair this meeting with three amazing colleagues from different parts of the world. So our first speaker today is going is Akiko Kuroda, who is a registered nurse and is an assistant manager in the neonatal intensive care unit at the Maternal and Child Health Centre in Aeliko Hospital in Tokyo, Japan. She has got a wealth of, of experience in the NICU and has also worked in the US. She is a member of the Japan Academy of Neonatal Nursing and the National Association of Neonatal Nurses. And her research, her research interests prim primarily focus on skin care, and the neonatal cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So we're gonna start with Akiko, but I'll introduce the other two speakers so that we can just have a smooth uh, presentation. Our next speaker is following on from Akiko, will be Kiyori Sato. And she's also a certified nurse in the neonatal intensive care unit, but at Kanangawa Children's Medical Center. And she's currently enrolled in a master's program at St. Luke's International University. Again, lots of experience in neonatal intensive care with over 20 years and as a member of the Education and Training Committee of the Japanese Academy of Neonatal Nursing and very much committed to promoting family-centered care in Japan. So two amazing speakers from Japan and then we're going to cross the world a little bit and we're going to go across to Sweden where Victoria Carlson has more than 25 years experience in NICU as well as working in children's OR as a nurse anaesthetist. And she currently works in the NICU in Uppsala, Sweden, with a research into neonatal anesthesia, skin to skin care for the extremely preterm infant and parental involvement. And I think all of us can learn so much from the, the Japanese colleagues and our Swedish colleagues on how to care for these tiny, tiny preterm babies. So enough from me, I'm gonna hand over to Akiko and please start sharing your slides if you would like to. And we will hear from Akiko first, then Kiori, then Victoria, and then we'll have times for questions at the end. But feel free to put questions in the chat and I'll keep an eye on that too. Over to you, Akiko, you can, perfect, thank you. Okay, can I start? You can, please do. Okay. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, my name is Akiko Kuroda, and I'm a neonatal nurse at Ike Hospital in Tokyo. Um, family involvement is very important for the par parents and families of the babies who are treated in NICU, and we believe it in it strongly at Ike Hospital. Uh, please see my agenda as the slide shows. For the rest of my presentation, I'm going to describe what we do for the family in our NICU, as well as Japanese NICU in general, and show you some pictures. Our hospital is one of the perinatal medical center in Tokyo, 12 beds in the NICU and 12, 12 four beds in the step-down unit. As you can see the picture on the slide, it's an open ward and unfortunately no private room for the baby and family. We have the room called IC room. It's used for the serious announcement for the parents from the doctor. Some NICU in Japan have been renewed the room from the open ward to the private or semi-private room. There's a variety style of NICU in Japan. 
um, for the pregnant women who have been classified as high risk, for instance, less than 30 weeks, we arrange a prenatal visit to share information of the treatments and procedures that can be expected in the NICU. The visit involves two separate consultations with both a neonatologist and neonatal nurse and we also give them a quick tour of the NICU to give them an understanding of the environment in which they and their baby will be treated. These are a few of the albums that we have created, which contain lots of messages from parents who have been treated in our NICU. Some parents put their tiny premature baby born picture with their message and put an up-to-date picture showing how much their baby has since grown. These pictures um, may help to reduce the anxiety of expectant parents, especially those at high risk. We tailor the albums to the, to the needs of our parents and we are constantly looking at new ways for how our past pay patients can help our future ones. Some parents may be more anxious to see these albums and vice versa. So we ask them what they want before lending them. Our visitation hours are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Males acquisition rate of childcare leave in Japan has been increased to about 17% in 2022 but it is still low compared to 88% in Sweden or 85% in Australia. Um, so some fathers visit their baby before work in the early morning to feed them and come back again after work to put their baby to sleep. Uh, on the other hand, sometimes I don't see the father's visitation of some baby uh, until the day of discharge. This situation, may create and burden mothers to raise their children alone in Japan. What about in Yanikyu? Um, siblings and grandparents visit are very, by appointment only. However, um, they have not been allowed to visit since the COVID-19 pandemic began. But we just rearrange these visitations through the window visits for siblings and grandparents since last September. Um, this arrangement can fit for only the baby who is in the cot bed. Um, therefore, unfortunately, it is not for incubated babies, means not for everyone. During the visitation, we offer standard care, which normally can be done at home by parents. We involve parents in all aspects of caregiving, as slide shows. We encourage parents to get involved from the moment the baby is stable. For the extremely preterm baby, especially um, during the acute period, we offer parents the oral care or supporting the tube feeding. Please see the picture on the right. Could be the left side for you. Um, the mother push the syringe filled with breast milk by hand to inject it as soon as the mother brings her breast milk. Um, the oral care has the effect of preventing infection and the smell and the taste of the breast milk helps to reassure the baby. We perform the oral care for the babies by the parents or nurses for the extremely preterm baby up to around 35 weeks and even other babies before bottle feeding. We apply a cotton swab with breast milk to the baby's oral cavity every three hours if the baby is awake. We offer the breast milk pumping at the bedside anytime to maintain or increase the breast milk secretion. The handmade capes on the pictures are available for lend to the mother to use anytime. We encourage mothers to take care of their big breasts, um, especially the first two days um, after the delivery, which is uh, checked by OB midwife 
and the breast check is performed on day 14 by the NICU nurse to ensure that, that there are no breast problems or complications. For skin to skin, we say kangaroo care. Um, the nurse picks the baby who would be a candidate to perform the KC uh, and discuss at the doctor nurse conference and started only after receiving permission from the physician. The KC can be performed for no acute respiratory problems or complications. We do not provide the KC for the intubated infants for the safety reasons, but some other NICU in Japan perform it to the intubated one. It is different depending on the hospital. The length of the time of KC to be minimum of one hour or longer. We do perform the KC during the tube feeding time as well, if the parents wish to do it longer. These are about the touch care we provide in our NICU. The babies on the picture are twins. Um, we only provide this care for the infant who is out of the incubator or stable infant. We have five nurses who have um, the instructor certification of Japan Touch Care Association. Touch care is a way to deepen the bond between parent and child through mind-body contact between the baby and the parent. It has been proven to stabilize the baby's emotional state, decrease stress hormones, and at the same time, do the same for the parent. In my experience, um, babies who receive touch care sleep longer and more deeply. It is also a good opportunity for the parents to get used to their babies and to find out how best to soothe their babies. The family room is designed to be close to the home environment. When discharge is imminent, the parents are asked to stay with their baby in this room for an extended period of time or overnight, depending on their wishes especially for twins or baby who needs special care. This experience leads to things they don't notice during normal visits and helps them to be themselves as parents. This overnight stay helps the parents since some of the extremely premature babies go home with an energy tube or natural oxygen so that they can practice and learn how to troubleshoot. If the parents have some problems during their stay, they will call us by phone, pretend that they are at home, so that the nurse tells them some advice by the phone, not visiting the room. Um, sorry. Some of the hospital in Japan may not have this kind of room to make the parents ready, or there may not be an enough time for the parents to prepare to re ready to go home. We celebrate some events throughout the year as the slide shows. We make it possible for them to enjoy events in the NICU that they would normally enjoy at home. Here are some pictures. For example, Tanabata in July, Halloween in October, and World Premature Day in November, and so on. Uh, this is a knitting project. Um, one of our nurses, um, wondered what could be done during the acute period when not much baby care was available for the parents, especially during the COVID pandemic uh, when visitation hours were restricted. We came up with the idea of a project to make the baby a needed hat so that the parents feel like they could do something for the baby. One mother said she could knit while thinking about her baby or mindlessly when she didn't want to think about it. I hope um, this project will help the parents in some small way to manage their feelings. We encourage parents to make a growth record notebook as well. As shown in the picture on the slide, the parents write message and events in the notebook every time they come to visit. Sometimes the nurses and the doctors um, write some message as well. This notebook can be a treasure to look back on the ex 
experience in the NICU as their child grows. Mostly parents don't know what they can do for their, their baby in the NICU, especially when the baby is extremely premature. Therefore, the baby's primary nurse informs the parents as early as possible about what they can do to help them prepare and maximize the opportunity for family time in the NICU. We stay in contact with the family after discharge to, to make sure they are doing okay at home. Telephone, with, telephone consultations are often done by the primary nurse about one week after discharge. Some parents have plenty of questions. The information from um, the telephone consultation is passed, to, passed on to the outpatient nurse for the one month checkup. We also cooperate with other professions as slideshows to share some cases that require special attention. Postpartum depression is on the rise in Japan, about 30% of pregnancy. And many mothers are highly anxious about raising their children, especially for the extremely premature babies. Therefore, it is necessary to collaborate with multiple professions to ensure that the cases requiring attention are not overlooked. We hold reunion, reunion meetings so that the parents can stay involved after discharge from the hospital. BEANS is an annual meeting of parents of baby born under Southern grounds. The meetings promote children's growth and development through play and provides consultation on child care. Uh, also, discussions were held in groups of the same age to share their problems. They often have the same problems and can advise each other. The BEANS meetings was canceled for four years due to COVID-19. We had planned to hold the meetings again last year, but Unfortunately, the meetings was not held, not be held last year as it has become a year to think about how to manage the meeting. Although the meeting used to be operated mainly by family members, the current situation has become a challenge as it has become increasingly difficult to establish a cooperative structure. Do you have this kind of meeting at your hospital? For the last things that I would like to address is that the challenges for the family-centered care in Japan. Inhibiting factor are, factors are could be a shortage of manpower, organizational culture, the cultural differences like mother's rest is priority in Japan or waiting for the mother to recover from the postpartum period before caring for the child. Um, disagreements about FCC among healthcare providers. Um, treatment tends to be priority or NICU environment difficult to maintain privacy. What about your NICU? Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Akiko, for giving us an overview on uh, the NICUs in Japan. Um, welcome to put questions in the chat and we will take questions at the end. But I might hand over to uh, Kiori now to talk um, a little bit more about the neonatal care. Kiori, over to you. Thank you. And continue to put questions into the chat and we can answer them at the end after Victoria's presentation. Are you okay to share your slides? Great, technology's working. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Kaori Saito. It gives me great pleasure to speak to you today. I am a certified nurse of neonatal intensive care, and there are about 400 nurses in Japan with this certification. I'm also the mother of premature baby born at 1,500 lambs. She received excellent nursing care in the NICU, and now she has grown up to be a healthy seven-month-old girl, for which I am very grateful. So, today 
I will talk about nursing care for the extremely preterm baby. First of all, I will introduce our hospital, including a brief explanation of our treatment policy and clinical results. Next, I will talk about nursing care. Nursing care for extremely preterm infants requires advanced knowledge and skills. Our NICU is known for its high survival rate for preterm infants and especially for its low incidence of IVH. However, while there are some aspects that are going well, there are also aspects that need improvement. Today, I would like to talk about the current situation in Japan and our hospital's methods regarding some regulation and humility. After that, I will talk about suction in respiratory care and care. Now, I would like to introduce our hospital. Kanagawa Children's Medical Center, KCMC for short, is located in the city of Yokohama. Yokohama is the second most populous city after Tokyo. The coastal area has a beautiful night view and many tourist spots. KCMC is the only children's hospital in Kanagawa Prefecture. We have 27 energy beds and 27 step-down beds equivalent to level 4 in the United States. Here is KCMC's primary treatment plan for the extremely preterm baby. We essentially sedate the baby during the acute phase with ventilator management to stabilize the circulatory dynamics. The echocardiographic findings are important not only for drug administration but also for nursing care. These findings help us to think about how to provide minimal handling to the baby. In Japan, treatment plan for preterm baby varies from hospital to hospital, with some hospitals must using vasopressor and other activity actively providing non-invasive respiratory support. This is the medical outcome for babies weighing less than 1,000 grams at our hospital. The survival discharge rate is 97.1% as a complication than shown on the slide. Now, I'll start talking about nursing care of extremely preterm baby. There are no uniform guidelines in Japan for nursing care of extremely preterm baby. Therefore, I think there are some differences in care depending on each NICU. Our NICU has a manual for preparing for admission and some regulation and humility. We have also standard plan for the overall care. This photo and illustration shows an extremely preterm baby immediately after admission. For efficiency and safety, our admission manual are detailed. For example, the location of infusion pump and ventilators and even where to remove cords and line from incubators are standardized. In this section, I would like to focus on some regulation and humidity. With regard to some regulation for immediately after birth, the JRC has issued guidelines for the care of babies under 28 weeks. In particular, to avoid hypothermia below 36 degrees, it is recommended to keep the delivery room temperature about 26 degrees perform the procedure and radiant roma and wrap the baby in plastic wrap. As for after admission to the NICU, we do not have uniform guidelines. This is a result of survey of 98 NICUs in Japan. There are variations in some regulation after admission to the NICU. There are different locations for measuring body temperature such as the axilla, rectal, and abdomen. As you can see, 74% of NICUs use manual control. 
and 11% use servo control. I think there are two reasons why manual control is common in Japan. First, if the probe of the servo control is accidentally dislodged, the temperature inside the incubator may rise, causing an accident resulting in hyperthermia. Second, the probes are attached to the skin, which may cause skin problems. The graph on the right shows the humidity setting in incubator. The median humidity is set at 90%, with 85% to 90%, 95% humidity, especially at 24 weeks or less. I will specifically show some regulation at KCMC. The temperature in the neonatal resuscitation room is maintained at 30 degrees. This room is located separately between the delivery room and operating room. Therefore, we can maintain a high temperature in the resuscitation room. There is a dedicated direct elevator between the NICU and the delivery room. It is a relatively easy environment for babies to maintain their body temperature even if it's extremely preterm baby. The table below shows the incubator setting at the time of admission. Our method of thermal regulation may be unique. We measure neck temperature as an indicator for manual control. We measure neck temperature by gently inserting a thermometer under the neck. As to why we measure neck temperature, this is for two reasons. First, in babies as small as 500 grams, the axial may not be a closed cavity because there is very little subcutaneous fat. Second, neck temperature can be measured without moving the baby's arms with less stimulation. Although there are few reports on neck temperature, but based on our research, we believe it, at, it is a good indicator of temperature in preterm babies. As shown in this graph, neck temperature correlates well with interscapular temperature, which is said to correlate with deep body temperature. As a supplementary indicator, we also continuously measure the interscapular temperature for the first 72 hours only. It reduces the frequency of neck temperature measurements. The probe is placed between the back and the mattress. To avoid skin problems, we do not use tape. We apply a wound dressing to the probe to reduce irregularities and prevent pressure on the skin. We constantly watch the interscapular monitor and take into account the time the hand window opens during the procedure. We then manually adjust the temperature in the incubator by predicting whether the baby's temperature will rise or fall. This graph shows results for thermal regulation of babies born 23 to 24 weeks. On a positive note, no baby developed hypothermia after admission to the NICU. However, we found two challenges. Some babies admitted to the NICU with a temperature lower than 36 degrees. These very small babies require extra warmth. Second, body temperature tends to get too high around 6 hours after admission. Increased monitoring and avoidance of high temperature are required. We sometimes find it difficult to manage the tem temperature of the extremely preterm baby with manual control because it requires advanced and predictive assessment by the nurse. It's does your NICU use servo controls? I would like to know if there are any innovations to apply probes without skin problem and safety perform servo control.
This table shows humidity setting for KCMC. The author maintains humidity setting on admission for the past 72 hours. We decrease the humidity setting by 5% per day beginning on day 4. When potassium and sodium are increasing, we do not lower the humidity because we are concerned that the baby may be dehydration. This is the research on the humidity situation of 17 babies under 28 weeks. You can see that the humidity is maintained between day 0 and 3. And from day 4 onwards, the humidity decreases by 5% every day. Next, respiratory support. This time I will talk about what we are careful about regarding suction. Suctioning may cause respiratory and circulatory changes and should be done with caution in the acute phase of preterm babies. We need to prevent IVH and protect the brain by avoiding changes in the baby's condition. We use a closed endotracheal suction system and suction quickly to avoid bradycardia. For less than 1,000 gram babies in 72 hours of birth, suction is performed by two medical staff. One nurse suctions, while another nurse or neonatologist watches the baby and their monitor. If the baby develops bradycardia or desaturation, the monitoring staff immediately lays the respiratory setting or performs manual ventilation. The decision to suctioning is tailored to each individual baby. Our study shows that in the first 72 hours, an average of 32.6 times suctions were performed. The minimum was 10 times and the maximum was 59 times, a difference of about 6 times. I will explain how we make suction decisions. This figure is a result of survey of our NICU nurses. The question is what do you observe on clinical indicators for suctioning using always observe as 5.0? There are 12 indicators above 4.0. We observe many indicators and carefully decide suctioning or not. Next, skin care. I will show the setup and ICU admission from preterm to protect their skin. Low volatile organic compounds polyurethane foam mattress were developed for preterm infants. It is super soft, disposable, and clean. We use sheets made of thin, sterile, non woven fabric. If less than 25 weeks, we layer non-adhesive silicone treated cards over seats. As shown in the photo, we use a pillow under the neck and the positioning nest to adjust the baby's position. I will introduce skin care for the acute phase. We do not change the baby's position for the first 72 hours. We do decompression roughly every three hours. We push gently mattress down around the baby. Since the mattress is very soft, this method is not cause pressure sore on babies. The baby's skin may become red in area with where it is in closed contact with the skin, such as the neck and growing area. If we see such sign, we place Mepilex transfer between the skin and the skin. Mepilex transfer is a wound dressing made of thin polyurethane foam with a silicone gel coating one on one side. I like this product because it can be cut into any shape and easily used on small, immature baby skin. In addition, there are some small tips to protect baby's skin as shown in the slide. So this is my last slide. In Japan, there are a few formal national guidelines for nursing care of extremely preterm infants. At KCMC, 
We provide non-stimulation nursing care with an emphasis on stabilizing the baby's circulation system. Integrated assessment and judgment are required for nursing care of extremely preterm infants. It is difficult to educate staff because there is rotation between world in Japan. Are there any similarities or differences between UNSU and awards? I'm not neonatologist and may not be able to answer exactly about treatment, so I welcome questions about nursing care. Thank you so much, Kaori. Thank you. Attention. Thank you. A great presentation. I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions and please put them into the chat. Um, but great, your survival rate of 97% with low IVH is very impressive. Um, we'll take the questions at the end, so I might move quickly on to Victoria Carlson. So please, Victoria, share your slides. And thank you for your presentation. Looking forward to this. <clears throat> Good morning from Sweden, since it's 7 a.m. here. <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm honored to be invited to to this forum and speak to you, and uh, my talk today will mainly be on the the most extremely preterm infants and and early in life, and uh, focus on parental involvement, skin to skin care, and our routine for skin care. And uh, I know that you are all uh, uh, very knowledge in neonatal care and my, the previous speakers have said a lot of these things and I will mostly have pictures to, to try to show how we work. And this is the, the newborn infant, uh, extremely preterm, and I think, uh, I think this might be uh, similar to to how you do it. Put them in a plastic bag uh, and preferably have a parent close by. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, a newborn infant, 22 gestational weeks, uh, about 60 minutes old. And uh, we have the umbilical catheters in place and uh, the surveillance besides that is the saturation uh, meter and no e EKG leads on. <clears throat> uh, we we learned the parents to to feed their infants from the very first meal, and uh, as Akiko said, we also perform oral, oral care. <clears throat> yeah, this is a little more mature mature infant born at uh, 25 weeks and uh, it's about 30 minutes old here and the first diaper is coming on and that's the father who puts that on so we try to involve the family in all the the care as uh, from the right from the start as soon as possible for the parents to be their infant's primary caregiver. <clears throat> and uh, this is an infant, uh, I would say about six days, five, six days old. Uh, as you can see, the skin is a little more mature. And we do have 80% humidity in the incubator for the first seven days. And then we set it to 50%. Uh, this is the nests that we are using to help the infant to be in a flex position and help them to have their hands close to the mouth for comfort. Uh, and we always care for them laying on their side as long as they're intubated and uh, we do uh, help them to change position every six hours uh, 
and uh, the umbilical lines will be secured with semi-permeable tape before the first skin-to-skin -skin session. Uh, and the skin-to-skin -skin is withheld the first couple of days for the most extremely preterm infants. So at the end of the first week, they are uh, cared for skin-to-skin. Uh, and uh, I know that we do talk about whether this infant is stable or unstable enough for, for, for being cared for skin to skin or not. Uh, and uh, Karen, you might help me out here to make sure that, that I get my, my message through. Uh, this is how our uh, dig digital uh, monitoring uh, uh, sheets look like. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you, I think I think most of you are familiar to to the layout. Yeah, it's yeah. it's quite similar to some to our Eric yeah. that's coming in our yeah. so very similar. So, but I think so, around the world it might be different. So maybe talk through it a little bit. Yeah. So in the first part of the the sheet here, you can see this is the the sats, uh, and. It's, at this point here, the baby is put skin to skin with the parent. And this is very much what we see repeatedly, how the infants are stabilized by being close to the parents. So the first part of this, uh, when the infant is very unstable, that's in the incubator. And then uh, the saturation and the pulse is more stable and uh, while the infant is cared for skin to skin. So we like to think about the infant being too unstable to be in the incubator. <clears throat> so skin to skin is a good place to, <clears throat> to stay, stabilize the infants. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is what the, the care spaces look like. Uh, so at each care space in our unit, uh, there is a parental bed. So during the first couple of days when the infant uh, with an extremely preterm infant, infant is cared for in the incubator, the incubator is at that spot where, where, the, where the parental bed is on this picture. <clears throat> and then we just switch places with the incubator and the parental bed. And by having a parental bed, uh, by the incubator gives the parents possible to be there 24 seven, they can sleep close to the infant, they will uh, be able to lay down and have a rest. Uh, and, uh, and we do what we can to make it possible for them to, to be close by all the time. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to show you a short video to show how we how we do when we move the infant from the incubator to the parent uh, and here the baby is still in its nest uh, a nurse pushes the incubator to the side and we have placed the parent uh, in a comfortable position in the bed um, and on this video, there is a, a nurse holding the infant, but it could be used as well a, a parent. We put it down on the chest. <clears throat> the infant is covered with a marina ball cap during the whole procedure to stay warm. And we lift the baby up, put them skin to skin, and cover. So that's uh, how the procedure is performed uh, to transfer the infant from the incubator to skin to skin. And uh, once the infant is put on the parent's chest, uh, this is how we, <clears throat> we like to do it. We have them covered with this uh, uh, wall blanket. Uh, and then we put a layer of thin uh, light blankets on top of that green blanket. We roll up blankets to put around the infant. 
uh, for support and also to create like a microclimate to to avoid the uh, uh, heat loss and we have this uh, uh, carrier shawl that uh, we pull up around to stay, keep the roll up blanket in place and uh, have the infant supported <clears throat> so this is what it looks like and we have no restrictions regarding you being intubated or umbilical lines or anything like that so so if you're born uh, 22 23 24 25 weeks gestational they are skin to skin with their parents uh, after a couple of days Uh, and we like to put them, we can also put them a little sideways like this to give the parent the possibility to, to see the infant and have an eye contact. <clears throat> uh, painful procedures like uh, um, blood sampling uh, are always preferably performed in parents' arms. But if they can't be in the parent's arms, we will always want to have a parent with the infant to, to comfort the infant and support them during the procedure. Uh, <clears throat> this sheet is printed out and handed to all parents. Uh, and. Uh, <clears throat> As the days go by, we walk them through it and help them to uh, to manage all different procedures with their infant. Uh, and they can do anything of this or as much as they like to. <clears throat> but we encourage them to do all the primary care. So as you can see, uh, we for, in, for parents being uh, for a long time at the ward, we they they can also learn to do different settings on the on the ventilators, like change the oxygen levels, uh, silence monitor alarms, and uh, take care of their infants. <clears throat> and we do what we can to support the family to stay together. We know that a lot of families have uh, siblings. Uh, and someone have to be taking care of them as well. So we we allow parents uh, siblings in the unrestricted in our unit. And uh, on this picture, you can see there is a much more mature infant, but uh, they have an older sister sitting at the end end of the bed and having a snack and watching a film. <clears throat> And here's a baby sister, as a, a bigger sister. <clears throat> and here's a family of four uh, where the father is holding the little one and, and the older sister can be in the bed as well. And once, uh, once the infants are um, past the, the weeks of the need of the incubate, incubator, uh, we can also make their care space in the parental bed so the parents can sleep side by side with their baby. <clears throat> so here on this picture, we have the little nest in the bigger nest, the big nest we call a bed in bed. So we, we have an area in the parental bed that's, that's safe for the, for the infant. And here is siblings sleeping back to back. <clears throat> the little one uh, uh, on ventilator uh, and the older sister having a nap next to him. Uh, and we do trust the family's ability, parents' ability. So here is uh, two parents assisting and supporting their uh, infant uh, while doing an x-ray. This boy had done repeatedly x-rays and we we always uh, try to have a parent with us when we, we do that. And after a while, they were so familiar with the routine, so they, they
they did it uh, on their own together with the with the staff from the, you know, the who performed the x-ray uh, and besides uh, skin to skin care and a very very uh, good social security system that we're proud of we are also pride, proud of this ikea fjellraven and avicii uh, and uh, as uh, we speak of it uh, uh, we have some to be proud of here as well since the tile on your opera house is made in sweden <laughs> thank you very very much <laughs> thanks for that victoria i did not know it was made in sweden but thank you so much <laughs> excellent excellent presentation again so we have a lot of questions in the chat. Um, I might mm -hmm. ask Akiko and Kiori to turn on your um, cameras as well, and we'll try and run through them uh, fairly quickly. Let me start at the beginning. Um, Alex in Zimbabwe, Akiko is really interested in your breastfeeding cape and says, can you, can you share the design so they can make them locally in Zimbabwe? Would you be able to share them? If you send it to me, I can forward it on to Alex if you've got a design. Yeah, thank you for the comment and asking the question. So I think one of my colleagues, she's listening now. So actually she made it. So I can ask her how to make it and design past to the Karen that would later. Be That'd be amazing for her design to go from Japan to Zimbabwe. Fantastic. Uh, the next question, Akiko, I'll run down yours as well. At the knitting project concept, they'd like to know the impact of this on mental health of mothers and whether they continue the knitting project today. Right. Thank you uh, again. So, but we just started, I would believe that maybe like one or two years ago. So we don't really know the impact yet. But as I said on the... Uh, the speech that some mother mentioned that they, when they're knitting, they're thinking about baby, feels maybe like, I don't know, warm or feel yeah. that. But also at the same time, if when they don't wanna think about their baby, they just like focusing on knitting, which helps them for the feelings. So, but maybe I should do the, the research later Maybe you should show you. another study for us and you can come back and tell us. <laughs> um, I think interscapular temperature monitoring, um, Kiori, are the babies placed prone all the time? Uh, thank you for question. Um, no, it, we basically on the spine position and we put probe and uh, baby's back and mattress. Right, great. Okay, thank you. And I think a question for everybody, for babies 23 to 24 weeks gestation, what size feeding tube do you use? A French gauge five or six? Victoria, maybe I'll start with you. What would what size French gauge feeding tube would you use in your tiny babies? Four. A four, a four, French gauge four. Great, Akiko and Kiori, what would you use? Same four. 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 For us. Yeah. Okay. Um, for us, maybe three or four. A three or a four. Okay, great. Shrini, there's your answer. Three or a four. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll keep coming down the questions. Um, yes, very Ritsu is very interested in your pressure areas because you don't change their positions. But I think what you said is you you, you push the mattresses down, don't you, Akiko or Kiori? to change the, the pressure areas, is that correct? Uh, thank you. Uh, as you said, we can't observe baby's back um, for 72 hours. Yes, we concerned about this, but um, in my survey research of 37 babies for um, at 23 or 24 weeks gestation age, uh, no baby with skin problem require, requiring treatment. So a um, good product, mattress. Right, thank you. 
Um, Pranav's asking about uh, how often do you check the baby's weights in the first week of life? Maybe Japan first and then Sweden. Uh, basically, um, first week, we don't scale. You and don't? First, yes. Um, and first time is um, one week. Second. So do you weigh at birth and then one week later? Yes. Yeah. Victoria, what do you do in Uppsala? Twice a day, first week. Okay. How different is this? Once a week and twice and a we, week? And we do it by by having we do have the weight of the nest so we lift the infant uh, like to scale the the to scale we lift the infant in the nest and put mm -hmm. it back down in the nest so so we like to think uh, uh, it's not too much stress on the infant when we do it it was certainly very impressive watching you lift the baby i agreed with a comment in the chat it's the most simple and streamlined lifting of a baby i've ever seen thank you another question is about humidity incubator humidity in the first few days of life how do you ensure the delivery of high incubator humidity so i think in, in japan you've got the cribs closed and you don't take the babies out victoria what do you do about humidity with your tiny babies we do have the 80% um, setting on the incubators and then uh, at the end of the first week we do allow skin to skin care but for the most extremely preterm infant that's usually say between two and six hours a day uh, and we have uh, we have uh, that we have we do have a publication about that and we have looked at uh, uh, sodium and weight loss and things like that and uh, uh, we think it's uh, it's okay it doesn't impact the infant a lot hmm. and kiori do you have any problems keeping 95 percent humidity which is higher than a lot of us use no 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 problems <laughs> yes that's great. It's very fascinating. Sweden's 80%, Japan's 95 So different. Um, I'm just whizzing down the questions because I'm conscious, conscious of the time. Um, let me have a look here. Uh, the loving it that the siblings are there. That's really lovely. Uh, what temperature do you keep your, uh, your NICU at? Now, I talked to Satoshi when we were in Indonesia a couple of months ago, and he said your NICUs in Japan are actually quite warm. Do you have a temperature that you keep your NICUs at? We do have 24, about 24 degrees in the rooms. You do 24? What about um, in Japan? Mm, and in my, uh, in our NICU, it's 26 degrees. Yeah, I thought it was quite warm when um, Satoshi was saying that. And you managed to keep that temperature. It's 26 degrees. Well done. Um, okay, another question is about echoes. What is the earliest time you would perform an echo for preterm infants 22 to 23 weeks? Victoria might start with you. Do you know when yeah. that would be? Yeah, we, we don't do it that early, um, but... Uh... Um, when they're a couple of days old. A couple of days old. And what about um, in Japan? When would you do a cardiac echo? Um, it's early, um, two hours um, after admission, after birth. Right. Again, we have some differences, which is fascinating. Um, a question was about elect intubated and ventilated babies. Your babies in Japan, how long would they be ventilated for on average, your 22, 23 weekers? Oh, about two months or uh, and depend on baby? Yeah. But average about two months ventilated. Yes. Yeah, and in in Sweden, <clears throat> less than a week. Less than a week. 
Yeah, I, I think it's, it, this is truly fascinating having um, the differences. Um, uh, tips to avoid skin breakdown. Oh, any tips to avoid skin breakdown besides humidity or oil massage? Actually, what creams do you use on the babies? Do you use oils or coconut oil or anything like that? No? No. You don't use any any cream on the on the tiny babies? Victoria, what about you? We don't use anything. Nothing. Okay. So, so our, our skin care routine is nothing. No. Okay. Just, just, just avoid all tape, all like avoidance would be the skin care routine. Fantastic. Um, I'm conscious that it is actually six o'clock and we really need to end this session, but the questions are still keep coming, which is amazing. Um, it just shows such interest there is and so such differences in clinical practice between units and countries as well. I'd like to thank all three of you for the most fabulous presentation. We had over 150 people join us today and I think this has been a really successful uh, Kurt, I might hand it back to you. Yeah, look, and thank you all for attending. Uh, it was a wonderful um, session. And indeed, just like Karen summarized, the, the, the fascination between similar outcomes, but very different approaches in different parts of the world is, is mind blowing. Um, and it, it just um, um, puzzles the mind. So thanks all the speakers and Karen for sharing. Next week, we have another session. Um, Dr. Arun Sat is going to talk about his um, expertise in using uh, ultrasounds um, in challenging situations and um, hope to see you all next week. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And Victoria Nakiko and Nikki, I will see you in Denmark.